In this video, we will start to use Lumion. We will start the application and we will see some really important settings that you need to do before even starting to use the software. So uh, first of all, now uh, this is the installer right here that is going to be downloaded once you select which version of Lumion do you want to download and install. So for example, you could have selected student or trial or pro or the other options. And once you do that, you should receive an email and in the email, the links to download these two files here, which are two launchers. Now the, the first one here is the Lumion, standard Lumion, and this other one is the viewer. So you have to go here with the Lumion standard. You double click on this and just to show you what's going to happen, it's going to launch this type of uh, application here where you're going to insert the activation code that you will receive again from an email in an email. And then you click on start download. And this is going to take some time because Lumion is pretty big. It has a lot of assets inside. So it depends on your internet connection, basically. And it's about 17 gigabyte of uh, assets that you need to download. So you also need to have a big space in your hard disk. Well, not so big, but uh, consistent. And then I will close this. And what you will see after you finish the download, it's all these files. But what you need to look for is the installer, which is right here. So this is the Lumion viewer installer, and this is the Lumion installer. So this is where you want to go. And so you have the launcher here and the installer here. Don't confuse it with the viewer. Okay. And then I can just double click on this. And I'm not going to show you all the passages here because I already done that. But it's really simple. You just need to say, okay, next, next, next. And install it in a particular directory where you want to install it. Again, remember that it needs a little bit of space about 17 gigabyte. And when you're finished, when you finish the install, then, well, I'm gonna exit here. When it's finished, is you're gonna see this icon on the desktop. This is the Lumion icon. If you don't find it in the desktop, you can go in the start menu and you will find it there. You can also use the Windows search and find it in your computer. So double click on the icon that you will see in the desktop or in the Windows Start menu. The first time you're gonna open up the software, it's gonna do like a test, a benchmark test of your computer. So you can test it also in many different devices and perhaps find out which one works the best. Now you can see I'm only be able here to use the software at 20% of its power. So if I want to do more, like bigger scenes or more complex animations, complex uh, projects or terrains, then I'll need to increase the power of my device somehow. But uh, let me change the language first, because this is in Italian right now. So to change language also, it's pretty easy. Just go there on the top. And in my case, I am Italian, but I will switch to English. Okay. So you can see it's pretty easy and fast also to change the language. And then we can see now everything in English. So before we even start to open up a new scene, let's go here in the benchmark again. And the test is going to run when you're first going to open up the software, but then you can rerun the, bench the benchmark. So this is probably the first thing that you're going to see the first time you're going to open up Lumion. It's going to calculate the power of your computer. So it does have certain requirements to run at minimum, medium, or the best. Now, the performance of your computer and the various components installing it could change depending on what you're doing with your computer. So for example, if you are uh, like using Lumion and in the same time, you are uh, working into another application or you're watching a movie or you're doing like five different things that's going to affect your graphic card performance 
especially if you are watching or recording and so on. And also graphic memory, this is the memory of the graphic card and this is the minimum, I guess. And well, it's going to give you all the information here that you need. Also a processor, it's uh, just above the minimum. Now, you saw before, I've tested before and I add all red here, but don't worry about that. It's going to work, but you need to switch a little bit of the quality. Uh, so I, I will show you everything in just a minute. So this is where you can run the benchmark. And also you have some tips here and you can rerun it again and see if something happens maybe when you close another application or for example also browsers and things like that. Now everything in the computer is gonna participate in getting some of this power from itself. Okay, and so let's go back here. Now you can see that the level of the power it's increased here well I'm glad about that so I'm gonna do more tests and figure out if I can bring this higher but another thing I can do here again before I even start is to consider to go into the settings okay now here is where you can change the performance of the editor so the editor is basically working with the graphic card so the more powerful it's your graphic card, the more you can increase the editor quality, the resolution, and so on. So if you have a well, not so powerful graphic card, you can set this to low quality. What I would suggest you to do is to get everything, unless you have a really powerful computer, decrease everything, use proxies, and put down, well, just deactivate the high quality trees and that's gonna be like the lowest settings for the performance. Now proxies are objects that will help you to generate like low resolution copies of something that it's high resolution and it's too heavy for your graphic card to take into the calculation. So my suggestion is start with this and then you can increase it little by little. Then you also have some other settings here, like input. So you can enable the tablet input, invert mouse, epsilon axis, and also you can do usage analytics, but you can check the information here in the Lumion website. And also system here, you can mute sound effects, use imperial units or not and you can also decide whether you want to use this. Now, one important option, I think it's full screen, because when you switch in full screen, you cannot see the button there to exit Lumion. So sometimes you don't know how to exit Lumion, you just go uh, in Windows and close it, but you can do also from here, remember, you need to go back in the settings, deactivate full screen, and then you can click with the X. Otherwise, you're going to get stuck here, not knowing how to exit. You can also go right here and close it from here, just like any other window. OK, now let's get back again in the main page, in the welcome screen here. And well, let's run another performance. OK, so you can see again it's increasing and then we can well, you can do other tests here. And now let's create a new file. So let's create a new, select which one you wanna open. Don't start with something too heavy. Just select, for example, this one here. Let's try it with the beach environment. So this is just the environment and it's gonna give you like a basic setting that you can use. And also this is good to test the performance. So then you can you know, switch a little bit here with the different parameters. Okay, so it didn't take too long to load the scene and I, I can orbit now by clicking on the right mouse button. I can move my site like that. And well, this is 
we're gonna explain all the other commands later but in this case I just want to focus on the quality you can see here this is really low quality so if I want to change that I will go here to settings and then go to image and try to bring up the editor quality and then you can run a lot of tests now you can see something has improved but the resolution it's still down so I go back and try to increase the resolution as well and maybe I can you know go up and down here and make some tests okay now it looks a little bit better now keep in mind that this is not the rendering quality this is just to work on the editor so you don't need to have this uh, the highest quality every time so I my suggestion is to keep it low as low as possible as, and then you can bring it up just to see how things are going just for a bit but then you go back to lower and then when you are ready to run the rendering or the animated video you can check the highest quality that you can get but you always will get the best quality after the render so when the process is actually finished now all those bluish boxes there in the back those are proxies and generally they are used to lower the quality a little bit of, well a lot actually because those are probably trees there in the back so I cannot even see them but this is also saving a lot of work for my graphic card so this is something again to consider talking about optimizing the viewport here and the workspace. So this is all for this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.